We begin with breaking news in Ukraine. At least one person has been killed and more than a dozen others wounded after Russian missiles struck a hospital in the central city of Dnipro. Local media showed buildings ablaze as staff struggled to evacuate patients. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has denounced the strike as a crime against humanity. Ukrainian officials say it came amid a large-scale rocket and drone attack on the Dnipro-Petrovsk region. Our correspondent Matthias Berlinger is in Kyiv and I asked him what more he could tell us about the attack. Yeah, it was a hospital in Dnipro. It's uh, been part of uh, a larger uh, shelling um, uh, campaign by Russia in several uh, places near the front line. We've also heard news from other uh, cities that are pretty close to uh, the front lines, like Kharkiv, that there have been uh, rocket attacks again, and there have been rocket attacks uh, uh, on uh, other places in Ukraine last night. So. Um, it happens frequently. This was a hospital, um, and uh, the people uh, in uh, there were people in there, and um, we've seen pictures of how these people were evacuated. Uh, so it was a hospital functioning, and it happens all the time that Russia targets this kind of civilian infrastructure here in Ukraine. There were also attacks on the rest of the country during a night during the night, though, uh, weren't there? Yes, uh, there were, again, rockets flying and drones. Um, I must say, like, I have not heard anything this night, and many people I spoke to have also not heard anything. Some people who live closer to the outskirts have heard something, but very faint, so most of them were uh, obviously intercepted. Those that were flying on Kyiv, not all of them were flying on Kyiv, but those that were flying on Kyiv were obviously intercepted already way before the city, so it was not one of these dramatic nights with air defense uh, uh, that we've seen in the past few days. Nevertheless, quite a few rockets and many, many drones flying. This happens really frequently now um, and if it wasn't for air defense the damage here would be really uh, big in the city but um, uh, the air defense that has been delivered since last October really makes a difference now and uh, many of these um, weapons these rockets and drones they don't even reach their targets anymore. DW's Matthias Berlinger reporting from Kyiv thanks so much for that. Meanwhile, Russia and Ukraine have carried out a prisoner swap near the contested city of Bakhmut. 106 Ukrainian soldiers were returned in the exchange, and Wagner's commander appeared to be welcoming returned Russian soldiers too. The mercenary Russian unit said it was now withdrawing from the flashpoint city and handing over full control to the Russian military. But Kyiv is still insisting that Bakhmut has not yet fallen. This footage appears to show a large prisoner exchange. It's been released by Russia's mercenary army, the Wagner Group. Men in uniform being moved from one side to another. In this section, Wagner's leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, is seen apparently speaking to captured Ukrainian troops. Later, the billionaire is filmed talking to returned Russian prisoners. Although the video can't be independently verified, Ukraine says it secured the release of 106 soldiers captured fighting in the devastated city of Bakhmut. Everyone who prepared this exchange is great. I'm also grateful to each of our soldiers who ensured that we had the appropriate exchange fund. Everyone on the front should remember this. The more Russian prisoners we take, the more of our people we will return. The prisoner swap comes as Prigozhin says Wagner's work in Bakhmut is done. The mercenary fighters are due to pull out of the city that's been destroyed by the longest running battle in the war by June the 1st. We're transferring positions, ammunition to the military, everything, including military rations. But if the military are in a tough situation, of course, we are leaving those who played a crucial part in capturing Bakhmut. Last weekend, Prigozhin claimed full control of Bakhmut. Ukrainian troops deny this. They say they're still holding ground in the city's southwestern suburbs. 
Prigozhan says 20,000 Wagner troops have been killed here. But that figure may be much higher. Many of the group's fighters have been recruited from Russian prisons. Now it looks like it will be up to the regular army to continue their battle here. We're joined now by military analyst and defence expert Marina Moron from King's College London. It's good to see you, Marina. Uh, now, a senior Ukrainian official said yesterday that the long-awaited counteroffensive is already underway, but that it shouldn't be anticipated as one single event. So does that mean that Ukraine is taking back territory as we speak? Well, good day. Um, that's a very ambivalent statement because everybody is expecting a counteroffensive in the form of a mass of Ukrainian troops trying to take um, a strategically important uh, location. However, from my understanding, and this is what Mikhailo Podolak said back in September um, 2022, is that the counteroffensive per se is different for the Ukrainian side. It's not the Soviet-style counteroffensive, but it, it, it's rather the tactics of, as he called, thousand cuts, where um, the Ukrainian armed forces strike um, at different directions, keeping the Russians on their toes. They are targeting um, logistical nodes, command and control centers, ammunition depots. So it's um, mu much more nuanced, and there is no this, um, big battles that... Um, we should expect to be facing. So if that's indeed what the Ukrainians are doing, and they are doing um, that to a certain extent, then we will not be seeing a huge, um, massive battles taking place. Rather, it will um, try to degrade Russian capabilities in a much slower way as to tread the Russian forces. OK. We just saw in our report that it seems Russian forces have now taken control of most of Bakhmut. My question to you is, will that impact the course of the war? Well, it depends on what happens next, because right now it would seem that Russians indeed have managed to take Bakhmut, but can they actually hold Bakhmut? And that is an important question, because if the Ukrainian forces were to push back and conduct attacks along the flanks, plus the Ukrainians are still controlling the key road, um, that would... Um, complicate things for the Russians. Now they have more territories that they need to defend, essentially. So that could provide an opening for the Ukrainian armed forces, depending on how they want to play it. That is precisely why um, Prigozhin wants to withdraw from Bakhmut, because if they don't manage to hold it, then he is not um, to blame, because he gave control of Bakhmut to the Russian armed forces. And conversely, if they do hold it, then they can advance to Slovansk and Kramatorsk, as was the initial plan complicating the defense for the Ukrainian armed forces. We know that Ukraine's military has been receiving significant training in uh, and equipment from NATO countries. It seems these freshly equipped brigades were not being used in Bakhmut. Can you tell us why and where we're likely to see them being used? Well, the reason for not using them in Bakhmut is just not to waste military power and to keep them fresh for the counteroffensive, um, which is very important because, according to some Ukrainian reports, fresh recruits were used in Bakhmut um, partially in order to save those brigades for later. And if everything goes according to plan, and um, if we're, we, we are to seize a counteroffensive in the next months, these brigades could be used as part of a combined arms operation some, somewhere around um, Zaporizhia or um, in direction of Svatove Krimina. But I think for the Ukrainian armed forces, the key would be um, to deliver a blow to the Russians by cutting off Crimea, by, by taking control of that land corridor. So Zaporizhia would be probably the most sensible location despite logistical complexities um, that are required to conduct a combined arms operation in that location. All right. Defence expert Marina Moran from King's College London. Thanks so much as always, Marina. Thank you.